Well, it took almost exactly 14 years and 420 videos published, but I finally hit a major milestone, and that is we are at 50,000 subscribers on the Location Rebel YouTube channel, and that is just wild to me. An entire football stadium's worth of people have subscribed to this channel, and if you are one of them, then thank you very much, and if you are not, then what are you waiting for? Get on it, you know where that button is. And today, I'm just gonna have a little conversation with you. I'm gonna share with you 10 of the most important things that I've learned in 14 years of doing this. Working for myself, blogging, freelancing, all of those things. Some of it's gonna to relate to business, some of it's going to relate to life, but these are the things that if you were coming to me and you were asking for my advice on how to get started or what you should focus on or what things you should consider, these are the things I would tell you to keep in mind. So rather than waste any more time, let's get into it. Here's my advice to you. All right, first thing I've learned and I would like you to keep in mind as you're building your business is that most people will never start. Everybody loves to talk about starting. I've talked to tens of thousands of people over the last 14 years, and most of them love to say, yeah, I, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, I wanna, I wanna, and then they do nothing. It's hard, it's hard to start. Everyone's waiting for the perfect time. It's a lot easier to talk about doing those things than to actually do them. And so if you start, you're already ahead of the game. So start, create some small goals for yourself, build some momentum, because as you build that early momentum, as you get some of those small wins, it's gonna make you that much more likely to keep going, regardless of whether that's starting a YouTube channel, starting freelancing, starting blogs, starting e-commerce, whatever it is you're doing, just start. You're not gonna have all the information, you're not gonna know what you're doing, you just gotta do it, learn, fail along the way, but if you do that, you're gonna be way ahead of most people. All right, second thing. Cold email is one of the single most valuable skills you can learn. If there is, if you were to say, what is the most underrated skill you could build in life and in business, it would hands down be cold email. If you can learn how to build relationships with people that have no idea who you are just by sending an email, that is going to open up so many doors. That's exactly what's happened to me. I've found freelancing clients. I've gotten all sorts of opportunities with my niche sites and Breaking 80 and Slightly Pretentious and even Location Rebel just because I've learned how to email and get the things that I want via cold email. And so this is essentially a form of copywriting, learning how to be persuasive with your words. But it's a very specific type of copywriting. So yes, I think copywriting in general, that is something you should practice, that is something you learn. If you can be more persuasive as a person, it's gonna allow you to get more of the things you want in life. But specifically, if you can translate that into sending cold emails to learn how to get what you want, to learn how to build clients, to learn how to build relationships out of thin air, that is going to serve you so well in just about any industry, any job, any business. Number three, freelance writing is still the easiest way to make your first dollar on the internet. It's the easiest way to make your first hundred dollars. It's the easiest way to make your first thousand dollars. It's the easiest way to make your first ten thousand dollars and beyond. So many people think AI is taking over and everything's oversaturated and freelance writing is dead. I promise you it's not. Those people, they're not actually doing the work and if they are, they're going about it the wrong way. It is not hard to do. It is not complicated, but it can be a grind. It can take a lot of time and effort and energy. But if you're willing to put in that time, it can be the best bridge to where you want to be in life. If you are unhappy doing what you're doing and you would like to have more freedom, flexibility, time, then freelance writing is very much the best way to get there. May not be the thing you're doing forever, but it's gonna be how you're gonna pay the bills and learn some skills so that you can then get to the point where you really want to be. Number four, while freelance writing is the best way to make money on the internet getting started, blogging and YouTubing is the thing that's really going to allow you to scale and grow your business exponentially. So I have been blogging for 14 years. I have been YouTubing for much of that time. Last month, in the wake of all of this stuff where people are like, SEO is dead, AI is taking over everything, I had my most successful month ever. I actually, I hit six figures in a single month, which I never in a million years thought that I would do. I would never be able to get to that level if I was just freelancing. So by having multiple blogs and having multiple revenue streams and being able to scale that income over time and doing it while 
kind of doing whatever I want. I probably only worked about 40, 50 hours last month. The rest of the time I was traveling, I was seeing family, I was seeing friends, I was doing all the things that I wanted to do, yet my income kept going up. And that simply is not possible in freelancing and in most other businesses. That is why blogging, YouTubing, content creation is so powerful. So well, yes, in some ways, building a platform is harder than it used to be. In a lot of other ways, it's much easier than it's ever been as well. You have more information and more tools at your disposal, and we're at a point in time where people are craving authenticity. They're looking for people out there they can trust. And if you can be that person, there are going to be all sorts of opportunities out there for you. So I am a huge fan of the kind of three-step process of build the relevant skills, freelance one of those skills to build your income and confidence, and then apply it to a blog, a niche site, a content creation brand so that you can scale it, and then also get all of the benefits of that industry, of that thing you're passionate about in the process. It's not just about the money, it's about the lifestyle, it's about the benefits, it's about everything that goes along with that. That's what I've been doing for 14 years now, and honestly, that is one of the best decisions I have ever made, and I wouldn't change it for anything. All right, the fifth thing I have learned on the path to 50,000 YouTube subscribers is that the grass is not always greener. You might be looking at someone like me and be like, man, if I was just in his position, everything would be perfect. Everything would be better. You might be saying, if I had my own YouTube channel and I could support myself, all of my problems would be solved. Here's the thing. We all have problems. As you evolve, as you grow something, as you change, your problems are just going to evolve and change as well, but they will never fully go away. And as soon as you accept that and realize that, everything gets easier because you're not searching for everything to be perfect. You're just trying to get to the point where you can be as content as possible without getting to be complacent and just letting things coast. So every person you're looking at and just be like, ah, oh, I wish I was just doing that. Trust me, no one is perfect. And when you're seeing someone on YouTube or on a blog or on Instagram, you're only seeing one small portion of them. You're only seeing the part that they want you to see. Everybody, every single person has problems, they have issues, so don't look at anyone and be like, oh my God, they've got a perfect life, because I promise you, they don't. But if you can learn how to be as content as possible and not constantly chasing the next thing and not constantly looking to change things and make them different or better and do that while not being complacent, still trying to grow, that is where you're going to find true happiness. And that's been one of the things that I've been trying to do a lot of personally is just being happy with where I am and not constantly looking for what's next. And the more I'm able to do that, the better off I've been. All right, number six. This is an easy one. Right? more. All of my success I have had comes down to my writing, whether it's writing YouTube scripts, writing blog posts, writing sales pages, writing emails. Writing is everything. And so if you can build a writing habit and learn how to be persuasive and learn how to tell stories more effectively, it is going to set you up for so much success regardless of what you want to do. I think one of the best tips I could give you is create a habit of writing every single day. Start with 200 words a day. Doesn't matter what it's about, just get in the habit of doing it. And if you do that over a long enough period of time, I promise you will see your career, you will see your business take off because of it, even if you're not entirely sure what that's going to look like now. So simply put, write more. You'll be glad you did. Number seven, it is easier to grow a YouTube channel than it is a blog. Now, there's a lot that goes into this because in order to have a successful YouTube channel, you have to be you know, at least somewhat competent on camera. And that can be something that takes time. You have to have some basic design skills because thumbnails are a huge part of it. You have to be able to write and outline a compelling video that people are going to want to watch. But in my experience, if you were to take someone like me, who's fairly competent at video and fairly competent at starting a blog, the way the world works right now, you can grow a YouTube channel far quicker than you can a blog. There is so much competition out there in the world of blogging, and while there's also a lot of competition in YouTube, it's easier to get discovered, especially early on, because YouTube has an algorithm that is actively trying to put you in front of people that they think will get value out of your content. And search, that's true to a lesser extent, but people have to actually be actively searching for something. So let's say you subscribe to a bunch of golf channels, and you're watching a bunch of golf YouTube videos. They might say, huh, this guy shot over here, he's got a new channel. You might be into some of his videos. Let me toss one over on your homepage and see if you click it and see if you like it. So YouTube is actively working to put your videos in front of the right people. And as you grow, that can scale up really, really quickly. 
For instance, right now, my Breaking 80 channel has less than a third of as many subscribers as this channel, as Location Rebel does, but it gets three times, if not more, the views on a daily basis. Mostly because it's found the right niche at the right time, and YouTube is doing a lot of the hard work for me and putting it in front of the right people, which is really helping things grow. No one's necessarily helping me do that with the blog. But here's the thing. This is the secret weapon. If you can have a useful, entertaining, informative blog and a useful, entertaining, informative YouTube channel, and you marry those two things together, then you really have something special because that is something very few people do, and especially something that very few people do well. I think that's part of the magic of Breaking 80 and part of the reason everything has been growing so quickly is because I've got both of those things and they work together. And yeah, it takes a lot of work. You shouldn't just start from scratch and start doing both of those right away, but that should be something you should consider working towards if you are serious about building a content creation business. Eight, another little secret weapon for you. Be authentic, be helpful. And if you can be authentic and be helpful and be entertaining, then you've really got something special going. But generally speaking, if you can help people get the information they're looking for and do it in a way that gets them to trust you, then that's all you need to do. The rest will take care of itself. Those are the two most important things. Be authentic, be helpful. Do that and you're gonna have success. All right, number nine, this has nothing to do with business creation or content creation or anything like that. It's just something that's added tremendous value to my life over the years, and that is to have a quest. With Location Rebel, I have my bucket list. With Breaking 80, I've got my, my goal to play the top 100 golf courses in the world. With Slightly Pretentious, I have my goal to go to the top 100 bars in the world. And what that's done is it's not only given me a goal to work towards, which I get a sense of fulfillment around, it's enhanced my travel and opened me up to all sorts of people and places that I never would have gone elsewhere. So for instance, with my goal of playing the top 100 golf courses, I've gone to places like Australia, I've gone to Thailand, I've gone to Ireland, I've gone to all of these countries that I might not have gone to otherwise solely to seek out certain golf courses. And when you get off the beaten path and get away from all the tourist destinations, you see places that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. You meet people you wouldn't have seen otherwise. And as you do more of this, you're going to attract people that have similar goals. Maybe not necessarily in the same niche, maybe you don't want to go to the top 100 bars, you want to go to the top 100 museums, or you want to eat at a restaurant in every single state in America, or whatever it might be. But by having a quest, having a goal, it's going to introduce you to so many wonderful things, add a little structure and meaning to your travels and your life, and give you things to work towards. And I've found that because of those three quests I have, that is the vast majority of where my best stories come from. My best stories, my best relationships, my best experiences have mostly stemmed from those quests. So even if it has nothing to do with your business, even if you decide to stay in your job, even if you take nothing else from this, I would say, have a quest. It can be anything. It doesn't have to revolve around travel, but find something around a hobby you have or something you are passionate about, build a quest around it because it's going to open up a whole world that you didn't know existed. And finally, the last thing I've learned across all of this is that financial freedom and the freedom of time and the freedom of location that is a goal and a trifecta worth striving towards. To be able to have the money to support yourself and do the things you wanna do, to be able to work on your own hours, on your own time, whenever you want to, not when someone else says you should, and to be able to do that from anywhere you want, that is the whole reason I think it's worth starting to freelance or starting a blog or starting a YouTube channel or whatever it might be. Because if you can get to that point where you can support yourself and have those things, that enables you to do so much in life and it opens up so many doors and it gives you so much opportunity. Like so many of the stories that I was just talking about that happened through those quests, I wouldn't be able to do if I had a day job. Like for instance, last week, someone called me up, said, hey, do you wanna go play this course in Pennsylvania? It's the number eight golf course in the world. I was able to say, yeah, I'm in. I booked a plane ticket and a week later, I was flying to Pittsburgh. And if I had a day job, I couldn't do that. So having that type of freedom is the whole reason to do this. It's the whole reason that I've continued to do this and I'm so blessed that I've put in the time and effort and hard work to do it because it's enriched my life in so many ways. And don't get me wrong, that's not to say having a job or other lifestyles or other goals are bad. Everything is different for different people. This is just what has worked for me. So there you go. 
I know this was a rambly video. I know it was a little all over the place, but I wanted to do something to celebrate getting to 50,000 subscribers. So I figured I would just share some of my thoughts on life and business that I've learned in over 14 years of working for myself, which is mind blowing to see how much gray hair I've gotten since I started. If you are one of those 50,000 people that have subscribed, especially if you're someone that has been here from the beginning, if you've been here from early on, Thank you. It sincerely means so much to me that people continue to watch these videos and get value out of them. And like one of the points I just made, I'm just trying to be authentic and trustworthy and helpful. And so hopefully you've gotten some value out of this video or any of my other ones. And uh, if you have, maybe drop a comment, let me know uh, what has been helpful and what you'd like to see more of. So as we strive to get that play button and get to 100,000 subscribers, I know exactly what to try and give you. With that, I'm gonna go uh, reflect on what it took to get here and uh, enjoy the rest of my day. I hope you do the same. We'll see you on the next video.